And Mohammed, it is always a pleasure to get your take on things. Thank you, Melissa. What do you make of this entire week? What's, what's the message from the markets? You know, it's a week in which the market got worried first about inflation and then about growth. And we've ended up being whipsawed in, in the fixed income market, but under enormous pressure in the equity market. And that's what you would expect. In terms of the moves that we've seen, we've some, seen some pretty extraordinary moves, not just on the equity side, but specifically in fixed income. Also in the credit side, we saw junk bonds, a spread go above 500 basis points for the first time since, I think, 2000, Mohammed. So how do you interpret all of that in terms of the potential stresses the markets could be facing? So I think we've realized that inflation is such a problem that this Fed is going to tighten significantly. We've also realized that other central banks are going to join in. So we are pricing in a significant tightening of financial conditions globally. That was very clear this week. And then we went to the next step, which makes sense, which is what about the economy? And now not only did we have interest and inflation rate risk, but we have credit risk being priced in as well. And that's why you saw what you saw in the bond market, especially the most vulnerable segment of the, of the, of the corporate bond market. In terms of junk and in terms of um, some of the zombie companies out there, Mohammed, I mean, there are so many, there's a whole cadre of companies that got financed at, at free money, basically, free cost of capital. Should we be concerned about that, um, about the chickens coming home to roost, so to speak, uh, and the impact? Could that be systemic in any way, do you think, or are, are things different this time around? So I don't think it's systemic. I do think we're going to see a significant uptick in the default rate. I do think we're going to discover that all sorts of things were done at zero interest rate, massive liquidity injections by central bank that do not make sense, and they will not make sense. I don't think that's systemic. What is systemic, however, is that we get a global slowdown that produces further complication on this inflation growth um, tug of war. So I, I, I am worried about the global outlook more so than a week ago, but I don't think we have a systemic issue within the financial sector like we did in, in previous downturns. Just to home in on that notion, Mohammed, about the, the further complications, because everybody around the world is, is tightening at this point, practically, except for China, I guess. Um, does that mean that we're more prone to a deeper recession or that we're more prone to a stagflationary environment? So we're certainly prone to a stagflationary baseline, and the risk of a recession is going up. Melissa, there's one issue this week which I think was the most significant issue that happened, and it's not the Fed. It's the Swiss National Bank. The fact that they hiked by 50 basis points has a ton of information content. And what it basically tells you is that there are very few central banks that want to see that currency depreciate. Yes, Japan but very few away from that. And what that tells you is that this tightening is going to feed onto itself because central banks are going to want to avoid more imported inflation. So they're going to try to protect their currencies by hiking. And that means we're going to get an even bigger global hiking cycle than we would have otherwise.